All right. If you look in the back page of your bulletin at the bottom is where Morales has put our scriptures and texts this morning. Uh, God's message of love for us. In the book of James, chapter 1, verse 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and it cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness, and neither shadow of turning. Then in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. You've heard some of this in Psalms. It says, For I am not persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor heights, nor depths, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We'll have a moment of prayer. Lord, again, as I come to you this morning again, Lord, thank you for getting us through our lesson with Daniel. Lord, as it would tie right into my sermon this morning of things to come and things that, that are around and about us and things that we don't always pay attention to, Lord, when you're talking to us. Lord, again, open our hearts and our minds again this morning that we be receptive to your word and to give me the words to share, Lord, as I ask many times. Lord, again, continue to guide us in our walk and keep picking us up when we need you the most that we can call upon you at any time. Lord, I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God wants you to know that his love for you is a perfect gift. How many of you have bought the perfect gift for someone and it just didn't turn out quite the way you had anticipated? Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. What about God's love like this? There's nothing that you can do to deserve it. Do you ever think about that? You don't do anything to deserve it. His love for you has always been, as we studied this morning in Daniel, thousands of years ago, and then we look at John in the latter part of Revelations, how that all pieces together. That love has always been there. It's an infinite love. You don't use it up. That's a good thing, you know. Uh, you get down to the bottom of a box of cereal or whatever. We're lucky enough, some of us, that we can go open up another box, okay? Well, as in God's love, it don't run out like a box of cereal or whatever. It says the only thing that we can do in conjunction with God's love or his gift is to just receive it. It's there. Just lay it on me, God. Lay it on me. Uh, you need to thank him for it. There's no earning it, as I said earlier there, and you can't exchange it. Always remember, uh, uh, shucks, what was Raymond's show called in our house? Just Raymond? Everybody, everybody loves Raymond. And he buys his mom and dad the perfect Christmas gift, a toaster, and has it engraved. Well, what do they do? They trade it in to Macy's or whatever. Don't even take it out of the box. And anyway, Raymond is beside himself. And they try to go back to the store, and you open up the storage room in the back, and there's 10,000 boxes of toasters. And the old man panics and finally grabs one. And anyway, perfect gift. You can't exchange it. It says you can't start God's love flowing to you. I uh, did a little plumbing this week. I was the helper. And uh, as the guy got it going on and I go back out and turn the water meter on, 
man, you instantly, you can hear water running. I'm like, oh, this can't be good. Well, <clears throat> we put an outside spigot in on, and apparently we didn't turn it off. It was on, so there was the water, but, you know, that sheer panic, the guys under the house trying to figure out where it's leaking. So you don't stop it. Here it comes, okay? You can't deter it. You would think the things that we stumble and fall, that we would deter God's love. It'd be like, how in the world can I pay attention to that guy or gal? Uh, you don't interrupt it. You know, uh, the ball game gets interrupted yesterday, lightning storm. And then J.D. says the TV just kicked back on and then it started raining so hard and Weston that it knocked the satellite dish off. Okay? You can't interrupt it. You can't do anything to undeserve it. Now, there's the part that we don't grasp. You've heard people say, I don't deserve to have God in my life. I'm not worthy, I, you know, whatever. Well, that isn't what it says. Finally, it doesn't have anything to do with our nature. And there's the one I think that means the most to us. It has nothing to do with our nature, how we act. It's all about God's nature. Never quits. Never ceases. Okay. Guys, here you go. Man and a woman are having marriage troubles. They go to a marriage counselor. Let's just say they come to Holt the Preacher. I'm no good at counseling. I'm just learning. They come to Holt. Woman tells me, my husband never tells me he loves me anymore. Okay? Well, I guess you can understand that. <laughs> I turned to her, and, uh, to her, and then I go over and I said, okay, is that right? And the man quickly and very contritely says, I guess it is. Okay? Now think about this. Do you love your wife? The man says, well, I do. I love her a lot. I say, are you afraid to tell her you love her? The man says, no. I'm not scared to tell her. Then I said, well, then why don't you tell her you love her? The man finally is very puzzled and finally says, well, I think the main reason is she never stops talking long enough for me to say so. Okay? Now, what's that got to do with my sermon? Well, it's funny. I know, that is funny. But did you ever stop and think the reason you never hear God is you're constantly petitioning Him or asking Him for something or for someone that you don't take long enough to listen for his voice in the matter. God, I need your help right now. God, my daughter needs your help right now. You know, whatever. Lord, help Ernest. Help Margaret. You know, all the time. Whew, wait a minute. Step back here. Oh, by the way, I, I guess you really are. Okay? And, you know, it's like, We've heard about, you know, the guy's late for work and the reason for him being late for work is he could have come to that stoplight and got run over by that drunk driver, okay? If you read in Romans, as I just did this morning in chapter 8, verse 38, God's trying to tell us about his sacrificial love. It's available for everyone. You think about it on a daily basis. What about this? God's going to bring people in front of you on a daily basis. That makes sense, yeah. But what it's also going to do is it's going to be a reminder of this. You're going to find some of these people troublesome, oh, yeah. irksome, or even a nuisance, okay? There they are. God put them right there in front of you. Did you ever wonder why he does that? Why does God give you a constant reminder of things like that? God loves him or her that he puts in front of you. Okay? 
their quirks and their flaws are for you to pay attention that Christ died for everybody, okay? God's love keeps flowing. God's love's there. Are you listening? Did you give him time to speak? Are you just rambling and rambling? I can say with certainty, folks, that those people that God puts in front of you, it's not easy to take them sometimes. As I shared with you there a couple Saturdays back in my house and I in that restaurant and this guy over here just belittling his little grandson. Eddie, don't take this the wrong way. Watching football coaches yesterday with six, seven, and eight-year-olds, a couple coaches belittling their own sons on the football field. That's tough to watch. That's tough to take. And it goes on, and I say this. Folks, that's not easy. Did, uh, no wonder God wants us in a prayerful state of mind. Did you ever think about that? You know, you need to just like under your breath think, man, that guy needs to settle down, God. You know, help him now. Because that poor little kid... He doesn't know what he's doing wrong. He's six years old or seven or eight years old. They need help. We're no different. That person that's in front of you that's saying God's name in vain or, or just off in a tangent or cut you off in traffic or did this or that, that nuisance, uh, those folks need an extra dose of love. But do they really? I think it's us that needs the extra dose of love Amen. to be able to tolerate that, okay? It's there. It's never ending. It's never ceasing. The love that God gives us, as I shared back even with Ron and Joanne, probably remember this with Leona's thing, I talk about agape love. I, I say that a lot, and I mean that a lot. That's a love that we don't quite get it, how his love is there for everybody. You remember when Jesus told them at the Last Supper in John chapter 14, verse 16. I'm going to read this to you. Maybe. I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, and that maybe will abide with you. And even the spirit of the truth whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not and doesn't know him, but ye shall know him, for he will dwell with you and shall bow, he shall be with you. I will not leave you comfortless and I will come to you. Jesus is telling them at the Last Supper, I'm going to send a comforter. Now I'm getting ready to go, okay? That comforter's there. You know, we talk about praying and I know we've said this, and I'm just as negligent about this. You pray to God, you pray to Jesus, you should pray to the Holy Spirit because he's there. He's that one that, like I've told you before, you know, Bugs Bunny with the good angel and the devil on the shoulders. That comforter's there, okay? Now, this is where I struggle at times. Uh, the Holy Spirit tells you God's going to talk to you daily. He will say, I'm here. That's that Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit tells you that you belong. You are worthy. You are valuable. I believe in you. I believe in your talents. And regardless of what goes on, it's for your best. It's your future. Because God believes in us. When you open that door, that one with no doorknob on the outside, your heart, you let him in, okay? And he never abandons that. And I think we get caught up in that sometimes. We can get separated. We can, we can have our own children separate us, our own spouse, sickness. Everything can get in our own way between us and God. I struggle when Satan roars at me. Now, here's where I get in trouble. I told you before, I could be in the shower. Things looking pretty good, you know. I'm up. My legs are kind of bending. 
I'm hurting a little bit with that warm water, you know. And all one Satan says, oh, by the way, I'm going to screw with you today, okay? <laughs> and that's what happens, okay? You don't pray that you should say, God, get rid of Satan. Just get him away from me. I know most of us try to do that. But what we should be praying is, God, give me the boldness. Give me the ability to roar back and fight him head on. Yes, okay? Sir. Yeah, yeah. God tells us that we're to be a witness. He says, I'll never leave you. I'm never going to forsake you. Uh, he has all the power. He has all the authority. And he's on our side. He has a purpose, and he will replace fear and worry. Now, we all get that. I mean, it's just a tendency. Some of us can get consumed by it, but he wants to replace fear and worry worry with love and stand strong in his presence. All right, Satan, what do you got? Okay, give me a second here. I've got to get my feet planted. Okay, God, put them hands on my shoulders. We're going to fight him today, okay? And he's going to throw a lot of stuff at you. Yeah. Now, David, this one's for you. David is a deep thinker. We all know that, and I appreciate that. More than any of you all will ever understand. He makes me, I take notes, I go back, I think, whatever. I heard a story the other day, two guys talking. And, you know, I hear, I have that 2020 hearing, you know, Mary Alice knows that. I mean, she can be talking to me from five feet away and never hear a word she says. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, a man asked this other man, do you understand every verse in the Bible? Hmm, good question. The man quickly responded. I'm thinking to myself, what are you going to say? The guy says, I do not. I thought, uh-oh, where are we going? Yeah. But what he goes on, he says, but I do understand enough of it. And the other guy says, well, what do you mean enough of it? The man answered, I understand enough of it to be troubled. And the guy's looking odd. He said, you see, it's the parts of the Bible that I don't understand. That doesn't bother me. But it's the parts of the Bible that I do understand. The ones that tell me what I ought to be doing. Most people understand right and wrong. However, if they don't know God, they don't care. But not understanding God's word is not a failure or disobedience, but knowing God's word and not doing it is where we fall short. So I think the guy basically just more or less planted them feet and his witness was strong. Yeah, I don't know everything in there, and you're not going to. There are mysteries in that Bible that man will never know. As we studied this morning, as David pointed out about the symbols of the visions that Daniel has and, and the things that we don't know. We're going to know them someday when he tells us, okay, when we're with him properly, all right? But the thing that that guy was reiterated upon is, well, the things I do know, and I don't do them right, I'm in trouble. And I'm not that concerned about what does that vision mean or what does that not mean or why did that happen, or how did he hold that Red Sea back, or how did you walk on this, or how did that bush not burn up? God's omnipresence, that he is the Almighty. He has the ability to do the unknown, the things that we don't understand that shouldn't really necessarily concern us. But what we do know is what we ought to be doing. And that's where we get caught up in God's love. It's there. It's an outpouring all the time. And how do you use it? You remember this. Jesus told the disciples and the Pharisees that he didn't come down here on this earth to change their old Mosaic law. Okay? They were trying to catch him up in everything. 
What he told them was, I didn't come down here to change it. I came down here to fulfill it. Plain and simple. I am he. I am the great I am. Okay? And we don't understand that. We're, we get caught up in the judgmental part of life. Well, I don't want to be associated with that person. And if you remember old Archie White's thing, when you know when he's talking to the old boy up in heaven, and, and, they're, and they're, the bottom line to it is they're just as surprised, Archie, to see you here as you are them. Okay? And there's a lot to be said about that. It tells us that God came here to be, or Jesus, came here to be life's examples. He came here to fulfill God's full plan. We're to obey his commandments. It's what he's telling us. Obey my commandments. Take our sins away with that blood on that cross. Okay? Uh, there's a great song I heard the other day. Uh, something Menzies, that guy's name. And he, he, he's the one that I mentioned to you many sermons ago about uh, my, my mother has, has been around forever. Okay? What he's saying is, God's my father. I've been forever. My mother was a human. God, my father, has been forever. This one's about the cross in the middle. How Jesus was able that day to look past all that. Okay? Look past what they're going to him. And finally, I want you to listen to this. I'm not sure that I understand God clearly. Okay? He will speak to you again and again. Now, people say that. I don't understand what God's trying to tell me. I, I run into that a lot when I'm studying and something clicks and, and I take my note or I take a picture on my iPhone or I talk to that little list thing to give me a couple pointers. I go back sometimes and look at that and like, huh, wonder what I was thinking then. I go get the concordance or whatever, okay? People say, I don't understand what God's saying to me. He's going to keep coming back to you, folks, okay? Different times, different examples, different ways. He won't quit on you, okay? He's going to keep coming back. Uh, he has different methods. The key is, as long as you seek to follow God's word, things is okay. The old boy said, it's not what I don't understand, it's what I do, okay? It's what I'm not doing that concerns me. He says to continue his message with wise counsel. What's that mean to you, wise counsel? Don't be willy-nilly. Don't be a flirt as far as uh, flash in the pan, so to speak, okay? You've got to plant them feet. You got to let that love flow. It's coming, okay? You got to be the sponge, like I told you earlier. Squeeze it out, it'll suck up more stuff. Squeeze your soul. Squeeze that Holy Spirit. Say, okay, I got you, God. I'm ready. Let's fight this fight. Poor Ron and Joanne have been battling here for a long time. And I'm sure there's been times that their waning faith has been. I don't know how much longer I can continue to do that, okay? It's a battle. Same thing with our walk. It says, remember this. As long as you're listening, men or women, let your spouse say a few words. You know, I say that tongue in cheek. But what I'm trying to say is let God speak to you, okay? It's easy to get mucked up in the mire of this world. It's easy to run off the side of the road and hit the guardrail or whatever, you know. You got to get back. You got to get focused. Open up. Be receptive because it's there. All you got to do is just let it in. I hope you kind of got something out of this. I know I say many times, are you ready? I know a lot of times, are you listening? And I think that's the important part of all this. Be a reaper of things that you sow. Just don't throw that seed out there and quit on it, okay? That's our job. Michael, eighth out of five, you finished, didn't you? Yeah, that means something. You finished. At the end, 
he's going to say, you, you, you did a good job, my faithful servant. Amen. Yes, yeah. sir. Okay, that's what he's going to tell you. All right, well, if all your hearts and minds are good, I got a closing song. <clears throat>